But the festival of matzah known as the Pesach was approaching, and the head of Kohen and the Torah teachers began trying to find some way to get rid of Yeshua because they were afraid of the people. At this point, the adversary went to Yehuda from Kriot, who was one of the twelve. He approached the head Kohen in the temple guard and discussed with them how he might how he, how he might turn Yeshua over to them. They were pleased and offered to pay him money. He agreed and began looking for an opportunity to betray Yeshua without the people's knowledge. Then came the day of Matzah on which the Passover lamb had been killed. Yeshua sent a Kepha and Yochanan instructing them, go and prepare our cedar so we can eat. They asked him, where do you want us to prepare it? He told them, as you are going into the city, a man carrying a jar where the water is to meet you. Follow him and go to the house he enters and say to the owner, the rabbi says to you, where is your guest room? Where am I to eat the Pesach meal with my Talmudim? He will show you a large room upstairs already finished. Furnished. Make the preparations there. They went and found things just as Yeshua had told them they would be, and prepared the cedar. When the time came, Yeshua and the emissaries reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have really wanted to, so much to celebrate this cedar with you before I die. For I tell you, it is certain that I will not celebrate it again until it is given its full meaning in the kingdom of God. Then, taking the cup of wine, he made the baraka and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Also, take a piece of matzah. And he made baraka and broke it. He gave it to them and said, This is my body, which is being given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. He did the same with the cup after the meal, saying, This cup is the new covenant, ratified by my blood, which is being poured out to you. But look, person who is betraying me is here at the table with me. The son, of God is, the son of man is going to be put to death according to God's plan, but woe to the man who, whom is being betrayed. They began asking each other which of them could be about to do such a thing. An argument arose against them which should be considered the greatest, but Yeshua said to them, the kings of the nations lord over them. Those in authority over them are given the title benefactor, but not so with you on the contrary. Let those greater among you become like the younger and the ones who rules like one who serves. For who is greater, the one reclining at the table or the one who serves? It's the reclining at the table, isn't it? But I myself am among you like one who serves. You are the one who have stayed with me throughout my trials. Just as my father gave me the right to rule, so I will give you an appointment, namely to eat and drink in my table in the kingdom and to sit on thrones, judge, thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Shimon, Shimon, listen. As adversary demanded to have you people for himself to sift you like wheat. But I prayed for you, Shimon, that your trust might not fail. And you, once you have turned back to repentance, strengthen your brothers. Shimon said to him, Lord, I am prepared to go both prison and to death. She replied, I tell you, Kepha, Rooster will not crow today until you have denied me three times that you even know me. He said to them, When I sent you out to withdraw without wallet, pack, or shoes, were you ever short of anything? Not a thing, they answered. But now, he said, If you have a wallet or a pack, take it. If you don't have a sword, sell your robe and buy one. For I tell you this, the passage from the Tanakh says, He was counted with transgressors. It has to be fulfilled in me. Since that happening... Since what is happening to me has a purpose, they said, Look, Lord, there are two swords right here. Enough, he replied. On leaving, Yeshua went, as usual, to the Mount of Olives, and the Talmudim followed him. As he arrived, he said to them, Pray that you won't be put to the test. He went about a stone's throw away from them, kneeled down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still, let not my will, but your will be done. There appeared to him an angel from heaven, giving him strength, and in his great anguish he prayed more intensely, so that his sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. On rising from prayer, he came to the Talmudin. He found them sleeping because of their grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you won't be put to the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd of people arrived with him, a man named Yehuda, one of the twelve, leading them. He came up to Yeshua and kissed him. But Yeshua said to him, Yehuda, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When his followers saw what was going on happen, they said, Lord, should we use our swords? One of them struck the slave of the Kohen Haggadah and cut off his right ear. But Yeshua answered, Just let me do this. And touching the man's ear, he healed him. And Yeshua said to the head Kohenim, The officers of the temple guards and the elders who came to seize him, 
So you came out just as you would the leader of a rebellion with swords and clubs. Every day I was with you in the temple court, yet you didn't arrest me. But this in your hour, the hour when darkness rules, having seized him, they led him away and brought him into the house of the Kohen Haggadol. Kepha followed at a distance. But when they had lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat together, Kepha joined them. One of the servant girls saw him and sitting in the light fire, stared at him and said, This man also was with him, but he denied it. Lady, I don't even know him. A little later, someone saw him and said, You're one of them too. But Kepha said, Man, I am not. About an hour later, another man asserted emphatically, There can be no doubt that this man was with him, because he too is from the Gilau. But Kepha said, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. And instantly, while he was still speaking, a rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Kepha. Kepha remembered what the Lord had said. Before the rooster crows, today you will deny me three times. And he went outside and cried bitterly. Meanwhile, the men who were holding Yeshua made fun of him. They beat him, blindfolded him, kept asking him, Now, prophesy, who hit you that time? And they said to another insulting things to him. At daybreak, the people's council of elders, including both Kohed Kohenim and the Torah teachers, met him and led him off to the Sanhedrin, where they said, If you are the Mashiach, tell us. He answered, If I tell you, you won't believe me, and if I ask, you won't answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be sitting at the right hand of ha Gvra. They all said, Does this mean that you are the Son of God? And he answered them, You say I am. They said, Why don't we need any additional testimony? We have heard for ourselves from his own mouth. With that, the whole Sanhedrin got up and brought Yeshua before Pilate, where they started accusing him. We found this man subverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor and claiming himself to be the Messiah, a king. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, your words are yours. Pilate said to the head, go hand him in the crowds. I find no ground for a charge against this man. But they persisted. He inclined the people. He's inciting the people with his teachings throughout all Yehuda. He started in the Gilal and now he's here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if this man was from the Gilau. He answered, he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction. He sent him over to Herod, who at that time happened to be in Jerusalem too. Herod was delighted to see Yeshua because he had heard about him for a long time. He had been waiting to meet him. Indeed, he hoped to see him before some miracle. He questioned him at great length, but Yeshua had no reply. However, the head Kohanim and the throat teachers stood there vehemently pressing him against, pressing their case against him. Herod and his, sol- Herod and his soldiers treated Yeshua with con- contempt and made fun of him. Then, dressing him in an elegant robe, they sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Previously, they had been enemies. Pilate summoned the head Kohenim, the leaders of the people, and said to them, You brought this man before me on charge of subverting the people. I examined him in your presence and did not find any guilt of crime you are accusing him of. And neither did Herod, because he sent him back to us. Clearly, he has not done anything that merits a death penalty. Therefore, what I shall do, what I will do is have him flogged and released him. But with one voice they shouted, Away with this man! Give us Baraba! He was with a man thrown in prison and causing a riot in the city and for murder. Pilate appealed to them again because he wanted to release Yeshua. But they, re- but they yelled, Put him to death at the stake! Put him to death at the stake! A third time they asked him, What has this man done wrong? I found any reason to put him to death. So I'm going on to have him flogged and set him free. But they went on yelling insistently, demanding that he be executed on the stake, and their shouting prevailed. Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one who had asked for in Yeshua and submitted the, for their will. As the Roman soldiers led Yeshua away, they grabbed man hold from Caesarean named Shimon, who was on his way from the country. They put his, the execution stake on his back and made him carry it behind Yeshua. Large numbers of people followed, including, Yerushal, including women crying and wailing over him. Yeshua turned to them and said, Daughters of Yerushalayim, don't cry for me. Cry for yourselves and your children. For this time coming, people will say, childless women are lucky ones. Those who have wombs and never born a child whose breasts have never nursed a baby. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For they do these things, the wood is green. What has happened is when it is dry. Two other men, both criminals, were led to be executed on the stake with him. And they came to the place called the Skull. They named the stake, and they nailed the criminals on the stakes. One is right and one is left. Yeshua said, Father, forgive them. They don't understand what they are doing. They divided up his clothes and throw the dice. The people stood watching, and the rulers stared, sneered at him. He saved others, they said. So if he really is the Messiah, chosen one by God, let him save himself. The soldiers, too, ridiculed him. They came up, offered him vinegar, and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourselves. There was a notice over him which read, This is the king of the Jews. 
One of the criminals hanging there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the others, one spoke and rebuked the first, saying, Have you no fear of God? You're getting the same punishment as he is. Ours is only fair. We're getting what we deserve for what we did. But this man did nothing wrong. Then he said to Yeshua, Remember me when you come as king. Yeshua said to him, Yes, I promise that you will be with me today in Gan Eden. It was about an hour. It was about noon. The darkness covered the whole land until three o'clock in the afternoon. The sun did not shine. Also, the parakeet in the temple was split down the middle. Crying out with a loud voice, Yeshua said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. With these words, he gave up his spirit. When the Roman officer saw that hap- what had happened, he began to praise God and said, Surely this man was innocent. When all the crowds had been gathered to watch this spectacle, the things that occurred, they returned beating their breasts. All their friends, including the women who had accompanied them to Gilau, had been standing at a distance. They saw it all. There was a man named Yosef, a member of the Sanhedrin, who was a good man, a Zadik. And he had not been in agreement with the Sanhedrin's motivation to their action. He came from the town of Ramathayim, a town of the Jodeans, and he looked forward to the kingdom of God. This man approached Pilate and asked for Yeshua's body. He took it down, wrapped it in a linen sheet, and placed it in a tomb cut into the rock that had never been used. It was preparation day on a Shabbat was about to begin. The women who had come with Yeshua from the Gilal followed, and they saw the tomb, the body, and been placed in it. They went back home and prepared spices and ointments on Shabbat. The women rested in obedience to the commandment. But the next day, while it, was still, while, while it was still very early, they took the spices they had prepared, went to the tomb, and found the stone rolled away in the tomb. On entering, the discovering the body of Yeshua was gone. They were standing there, not knowing what to think about it, and then suddenly two men dazzling white bride clothing stood next to them, terror-stricken. They bowed down their faces to the ground. The two men of them said, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has been risen. Remember how he told you while he was in still in the Gilal that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of a sinful man, executed on the stake as a criminal, and on the third day be raised again? Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told everything that the eleven and to all the rest. The women who had told the emissaries these things were Miriam and Bagala, Yochanan, and Yochurim, Miriam, the mother of Yaakov, and the others in their circle. But the emissaries didn't believe them. In fact, they thought that they were, what they said was utter nonsense. However, Kepha got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping down, he only saw the burial cloths and went on wondering what had happened. That same day, two of the men were going toward the village about seven miles from Yerushalayim called Emmaus. And they were talking with each other about what the, all the things that had happened. As they were talking and discussing, Yeshua came to himself... Yeshua himself came up and walked with them, but something kept, kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you talking about to each other as you walk along? They stopped short, their faces downcast, and one of them, named Cleopas, answered, are you the only person staying in Jerusalem that doesn't know the things that have been going on these last few days? What things, he asked them. They said to him, the things about Yeshua the Nazarite. He was a prophet and proved by the things he did and said before God and all the people. Our head Kohen and the leaders handed him over so he could be sentenced to death and executed on stake as a criminal. We had hoped that he would be the one to liberate Israel. Besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened, and this morning some of the women ar- astounded us. They were at the tomb early, and they couldn't find his body. They came back. They also reported that they had seen a vision of angels who said, He's alive! Some of our friends went to the tomb and found exactly as the women had said, but they didn't see him. He spoke to them. Foolish people! So unwilling to put your trust in everything the prophet spoke. Didn't the Messiah have to die before entering his glory? Then, starting with Moshe and all the prophets, he explained to them the things that could be found throughout the Tanakh concerning himself. They approached the village where they were going. He made as if he were going further. But they said to him, staying, stay with us, for it's almost evening and it's getting dark. So he went with them to stay with them. And he was reclining with them at the table. He took the matzah, made the baraka, and broke it and handed it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he became visible to them, invisible to them. They said to each other, didn't our hearts burn inside of us as he spoke to us on the road, opening up the Tanakh to us? They got up at once, returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven gathered together with their friends, saying, it's true, the Lord is risen. Shimon saw it. The two told what had happened on the road, became known to them, and breaking into matzah. They were still talking about they were still talking about it when there he was, standing among, a, among them, startled and terrified. They thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said to them, why are you upset? Why are these doubts welling up inside of you? Look at my hands and feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost doesn't have flesh and bones, as you can see I do. 
As he said this, he showed them his hands and feet, and while they were still unable to believe it, for joy and stood there dumbfounded, he said to them, Have you something to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Yeshua said to them, This is what I meant when I was still with you and told you that everything written about me in the Torah of Moshe and the prophets and the Psalms had to be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the Tanakh, telling them, here is what it says. The Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And in his name, the repentance leading to forgiveness of sins to be proclaimed to people for all nations, starting with Yerushalayim. You are my witnesses, all these things. Now I'm sending you forth upon what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have equipped, until I've equipped you with the power from above. He led them toward Biet Aneya. Then, raising his hands, he said, Baracha, over them. And as they blessed them, he withdrew from them and he carried up into heaven. They bowed and worshipped to him. They returned to Jerusalem, overflowing with joy. And they spent all their time in the temple courts praising God. 